Hello everyone. What we're going to be doing today is discussing the Korean War, specifically the causes of the war and the early years of the war. Uh, first and foremost, like any major conflict, we have to look at the underlying reasons for the conflict. Not only why it happened, but also how it was allowed to happen. With the Korean War, it's generally assumed there are three primary reasons that caused the war to break out. The first involves the spread of communism following World War II. At the end of World War II, um, the United States and the Soviet Union found, them on, found themselves on opposite sides of a philosophical divide. The United States, on one hand, wanted a market-driven economy. They wanted democratically elected leaders. The Soviet Union, on the other side, wanted a state-driven economy, and they wanted um, a communist system with an authoritarian dictator controlling and ruling over the the nation. Now, it was a very wide divide. Neither side saw room for compromise. And following the war, the end of World War II, a lot of smaller, less powerful nations found themselves caught between this philosophical difference between these two superpowers. A lot of nations found themselves having to choose a state-sponsored, a state-driven authorita authoritarian dictatorship system or a market-driven, uh, democratically elected system. And neither side was really willing to budge between the United States and the Soviet Union. So as different nations started choosing one or the other, it kind of became a critical crisis where neither country wanted to let the other become too powerful. So a flashpoint of this kind of Cold War was the conflict on the Korean Peninsula. The United States, Russia viewed it as, or the Soviet Union, viewed it as an opportunity to expand their power, expand their sphere of influence. The United States, on the other hand, saw this as a critical moment to stem the tide, to contain the increase in countries choosing communism. And so what happened was, the United States found itself in a position where they were forced, in their minds, to intervene in the conflict. So to recap, one, the major, or the spread of communism following the war led to a flashpoint on the Korean Peninsula and the United States, to contain the spread of communism, found themselves forced to enter the conflict. The third and final underlying cause of the Korean War was the 1910 to 1945 Japanese occupation of the South Korean or the, the Korean Peninsula. Their occupation is something we won't be discussing in detail today, but when it ended in 1945, it did not end amicably. It ended because Japan found themselves on the losing end of World War II. And what happened was they were forced to pick up everything and quite simply leave the Korean Peninsula. This created a tremendous power vacuum. There were very few political leaders left in the Korean Peninsula. It was as if everyone in a position of power just got up and left. 
those South Koreans left behind found themselves leaderless and kind of unsure of how to govern, at least in the very, very, very early days. Now what happened was, because of the power vacuum, when the war ended and Japan left, we ended up with a situation where both the USA and the Soviet Union wanted to be involved in the governing of the Korean Peninsula. So this is why in 1945, the South Korean or the, the Korean Peninsula was divided between the South area and the North area. The South area was governed by the American forces that were stationed there. The North area was governed by the Soviet forces that were stationed there. So now you had these two kind of diametrically opposed superpowers and they're, they're positioned in a country, Korea, that they've forcibly divided along the 38th parallel. And Korean citizens had very little to do with governing at this point. So you kind of had the Korean citizens along for the ride as both the US and the Soviet Union stared each other down across the demilitarized zone. And this position continued for several years. From 1945 right up until 1949, you had the US in the south and the Soviet Union in the north opposing each other and focusing on each other across the DMZ. While this happened, leadership came into power on both the South and the North, but it wasn't yet their countries to govern. It wasn't until 1949 when the United States and the Soviet Union agreed to withdraw from the Korean Peninsula that Korean forces finally were able to, in both the North and the South, govern for themselves. In the South, you had Syng Min Ri, who, was, who became Korea's first president that we'll discuss later. And in the North, you had Kim Il-sung, who rose to power underneath the Soviet regime. So now, as 1950 approaches, you have finally Korean govern Koreans governing themselves but there is still the divide that exists between the North under Kim Il-sung and the South under Syng Min Ri. So now where we are is kind of an unhappy truce, an untenable situation for many where the Korean Peninsula is divided under two separate leaders. That continued until Syng Min Ri, sorry, Kim Il-sung in 1950, specifically June 24th, 1950, decided to invade South Korea. And June 24th, 1950, therefore, signifies the beginning of the Korean War. This is the day the war started, as North Korean forces under Kim Il-sung poured across the demilitarized zone and began invading South Korea. Now, one reason or one major issue leading to this day was that North Korea had a much closer proximity to Russia or the Soviet Union than South Korea did to the US. And so what happened was they were able to militarize. They were able to build their military and build their forces much faster than the South Koreans. 
they were, at the beginning of the war, much stronger militarily. So, the early days of the war went somewhat predictably. What happened was, you had this very well-armed force, very driven force, pouring across the DMZ. And in the south, you had an unorganized, still kind of asserting themselves into power, South Korean leadership, that wasn't prepared for the attack launched by North Korea. So the first couple months of the war, or the first couple weeks of the war, ended or went very poorly for South Korea. Very quickly, the North Koreans moved into Seoul. Very quickly, they moved south of Seoul. And they continued on moving down the South Korean peninsula. At this time, the South Korean response was limited. They were relatively unprepared for the invasion. But a critical moment was also happening elsewhere. Some background on the United Nations. The United Nations was formed as a governing body to essentially prevent another world war. Their, their mandate was to connect the, the countries of the world and to ensure that another world war was never able to break out. They were supposed to interconnect the different nations of the world to ensure a massive conflict would never happen again. Now, also, the United States exists, or sorry, the United Nations exists in two forms. You have the regular United Nations and the Security Council. The regular United Nations is re in, uh, involved in diploma diplomatic issues and things of that nature. The Security Council is involved in every aspect of military life for the United Nations. And while the United Nations has a huge membership body, the Security Council was only several militarily powerful nations. And the Security Council to ensure cooperation from the Soviet Union, the United States, etc., gave each member of the Security Council a veto, a veto vote in any proposition brought before the Security Council, any one member could veto United Nations participation. They could quite simply say, no, the United Nations will not be involved, and the other security members cannot force United Nations action. However, right before the beginning of the Korean War, to entice China to join the United Nations, they were also offered a seat on the Security Council. And this greatly upset Russia. It upset the Soviet Union to the point where they refused for a short time to participate in the Security Council. And this is tremendously important for the Korean War because when North Korea attacked South Korea, the United Nations Security Council voted to intervene. They voted to join the South Korean side and prevent the invasion of South Korea. If the Soviet Union had been participating in the Security Council, they very easily could have said no, the United Nations will not participate, and in that situation, it's almost impossible that we would have had the same outcome of the war that we did. So, to go back, it's now summer 1950. North Korea is 
moving quickly through, through the south. And they are moving so fast, they're encountering almost no resistance. Even when the United Nations joined, they weren't yet able to mount a reliable defense. So, the North continued moving south until the only remaining allied area was Busan and what became known as the Busan Perimeter, a wall or kind of area of defense around Busan City. That kind of dictates the story of the first couple months of the war. Then the next major turning point occurred. On September 15th, 1950, Allied forces under the leadership of General MacArthur landed or staged an amphibious landing at Incheon Port. This was a huge deal. Those forces that could have been defending the south instead were massing off of Incheon. And it ended up being a very, uh, very effective tactical maneuver. Because when they landed on a, September 15th, everything changed. The North forces caught behind Incheon were quickly cut off from their supplies. And so the amphibious group that landed at Incheon was able very quickly to change the tide of the war. What you had happening was this group was very easily, a, very easily able to move from Incheon into Seoul and occupy the South, previous South Korean capital. From there, again, very quickly, they moved north into North Korea. And just a month later, on October 19, 1950, Allied forces occupied Pyongyang, the, the North Korean capital. So landing from September 15th, inside one month and four days, the entire dynamic of the war changed. Suddenly, instead of being driven back only to Busan, you had a large, heavily armored, advanced force that occupied not only Seoul, but also Pyongyang. And they continued moving north. Now, they met more resistance. It wasn't the steamroll the north had earlier accomplished. <clears throat> earlier accomplished in South Korea, but they did continue progressively moving north. However, another major turning point was about to occur. On November 4th, just two and a half weeks after the Allied forces occupied Pyongyang, China decided to enter the war. Now, China wasn't as militarily advanced as the other combatants, but what China had that nobody else had in the area was tremendous amounts of soldiers. When they crossed over from Manchuria, or northern China, into northern North Korea, they did it in huge numbers. A tremendous, tremendous amount of men moved across the border and slowly began pushing back across the American advance. Until, gradually, both sides, the Allied in the South and the Chinese North Korean in the North, met once again around the DMZ area. And this happened in essentially late 1950, early 1951. And this kind of concludes the beginning of the Korean War. It's all of the key points and the underlying causes that 
led to this massive bloody conflict that went on to shape the South Korean peninsula for decades. Just very quickly to summarize, the war happened because communism was spreading very quickly after World War II. That was a situation America didn't consider acceptable. They wanted to stop it at whatever cost before they believed the spread would get out of control. And finally, because when Japan left the South Korean Peninsula, they created this power vacuum that the United States occupied in the South and Russia occupied in the North. That continued until 1949, when both sides left, and shortly thereafter, North Korea, under Kim Il-sung, invaded North Korea. Their forces pushed to Busan. They continued driving that way until MacArthur and the American Allied forces landed in Incheon. Once that happened, they started pushing north, and that continued until China entered the war on November 4th, 1950. And once again, momentum shifted until both sides essentially were fighting each other around the DMZ in late 1950, early 1951. This is the beginning of the Korean War and the underlying causes of the Korean War. Thank you very much for listening. Have a good day.